Let's crack on with the music then. Um, here's Katie and Nicola Bishop, bassoon and piano, uh, doing this uh, arrangement of, of Soldier, Soldier, Would You Marry Me uh, by uh, Jim Parker. Jim Parker, who's a film composer, ex guild tall chappy, a wonderful fellow. And this comes from those of you who may remember the TV programme featuring Robson Green of Soldier, Soldier. I think it was in the 90s they started. don't remember really. But I remember the made-up regiment that they all belonged to, which was the King's Own Fusiliers, loosely based on our own Royal Regiment of Fusiliers now. Um, anyway, the song used to be sung by uh, soldiers uh, long ago, so what a wonderful um, evocation of uh, times past, and what a wonderful bassoon sound and uh, familial ensemble, soldier, soldier.
the return now of our favoured artist, Mr. Sam Edwards, who offers a, a beautiful performance of that perennial ballad, My Funny Valentine. I really love these uh, recordings of Sam because you can hear his personality in the rendition, in uh, the way he structures the melody but improvises around it, and all of the sort of uh, jazz language he brings. Just wanted to say that, Sam, thanks very much. <laughs> I think I'll be quiet now and let him do the talking via the music, my funny Valentine. Whenever we feature the performance of uh, performances of Derek Derek Rogers, I often say I'll leave it up to him to introduce uh, the numbers, which I always do, really, apart from now, because I want to say how much I've enjoyed his series of ballads. Uh, the Opus 10, this is the last of the set of four, and uh, it, they come from a period in his life uh, early on, really, when uh, he first became enamoured of um, Clara, Clara Schumann, uh, and the youthful exuberance at the same time, the sense of, I think, pathos in these 
pieces is discernible. I just wanted to mention that because we complete the set today. Uh, Derek, I'm sure you have much more intelligent things to say and to play. Let's have Ballad, Opus 10, number four. Today, I'm going to record number four of the Brahms Four Ballads, Opus 10. This ballad is the most extensive of the four, and in my view, the most expressive, containing very simple but beautiful melodies throughout. It's written in five sections. The third section is a shortened version of section one, and the final section, section five, is a shortened version of section two. I've mentioned in my early recordings the way Brahms has used key contrast in these ballads, and in particular the shifts between major and minor. This fourth ballad is no exception. In fact, there seems to be a conflict between the brighter major key and the darker minor key. It opens straight away with a B minor broken chord and then it followed immediately by a B major broken chord. And this seems to suggest that the conflict is started up right from the beginning. But it's not until the final section that we see the conflict resolved. There is initially a octave phrase which is repeated and both times it shifts from minor to major. But it is only over the last few bars that we finally hear how it's going to resolve. Initially we think it's going to be the minor but the major wins with a repeat, repeated chord of B major over two bars at the very end.
the name Marion, uh, in its French uh, origins at least, uh, is a variant of the Latin meaning star of the sea. It's of course Marion as well, so in other words, to do with Mary in many other cultures. So a kind of Christian edge to it, I guess, but um, this is a piece by me performed by dear Penny Rich, beautifully on the clarinet, if you ask me. And uh, the uh, visuals are very um, mesmeric, I think, uh, because, of course, they, they speak of the sea and they speak of the star. Anyway, you'll find out, because not only will you look, but you'll listen. Special mention, though, if you don't mind, it's called Star of the Sea, and it derives from Marion because it's dedicated to a Marion, our friend Marion Booth, Star of the Sea.
conclude now with a return of Larry Berkowitz, Zach Barrett and friends in a piece by Mr Frank Foster. But before we dive in on this really animated exit, can I say a big thank you to you uh, for popping along to these concerts. We're looking forward now as the tension increases <laughs> in announcements towards our eventual release into the world and moments when you and I and everyone shall meet in the flesh, God willing, in theatres across the land. Looking forward to it enormously. Thank you very much for being here as usual. Looking forward to seeing you in the flesh one day soon. Nothing else to say really except take it away, Larry, Zach and others in a piece called Shiny Stockings. Those silk shiny stockings that you wear when I'm with you You wear, cause I told you that I dig that crazy hue when we go to a dance Do I think of romance? No, all I do is dance At those shiny old stockings Then came along some guy Who dig those stockings too And you changed your mind about me Why, I never knew I guess I'll have to find one of a kind The guy who wears those shining stockings do Change your mind about me 
Wow.